In this video, we're going to talk about the payback method, which is a means of evaluating investment opportunities and whether or not to accept a project. So the first step with the payback method is we're going to calculate the payback period. And what that means is we're calculating for a given investment how long it's going to take to recoup our investment. If we invest $100,000, how long is it going to take for this investment to pay us that $100,000 back? And then, once we know what this payback period is, how quickly the project will pay for itself, then we can say, okay, step two, we are going to accept the project if that payback period is for a shorter length of time than whatever happens to be our required time frame for our firm. So let's say, for example, that we require at our firm that all investments be paid back within eight years. And then we calculate for an investment that the payback period is actually going to be 10 years. It'll take 10 years before we get our money back on this investment. Then we will reject the project because the payback period is actually longer than what the required time frame is for our firm. And the required time frame is up to your firm. It's up to your CEO or your manager. Uh, so you're, this is going to vary on a firm by firm basis. So let's jump into an example. It'll make it a little easier for you to understand. Let's say that you have a company that gives hot air balloon tours. And let's say that you're thinking about buying an additional balloon. You're saying, hey, you know what? I actually could get another balloon and then I'd be able to give more tours and make more money. So then you say, well, how much would that, how much would that cost to buy an additional balloon? I'm not talking about replacing the balloon you already have. I'm saying buy an additional one, one more. So let's say that was $300,000, right? So you can think of this $300,000 as an investment. You're making an investment in something, and you want to see, well, I'm expecting by investing this $300,000 to get an increase in sales. And I want to expect to be able to get more money from now having an extra balloon. So I want to know how quickly am I going to get my $300,000 back, right? So up front, I'm putting out three hundred dollars So here's negative $300,000. And if I were to add up all the cash flows I expect going forward, how soon is it that I'm going to get that $300,000 back? So let, first we need to know, well, what kind of sales increase do we expect? And in this case, let's say we estimate $75,000 a year. Now you could say, let's say for the next 10 years. So for the next 10 years, you're going to get $75,000 a year, increased sales because of buying this balloon for $300,000. And so... For your company, you say, you know what, I don't want to make an investment unless it's going to pay for itself within five years. If it's not going to pay for itself within five years, I don't think it's a good investment. I don't want to do it. So let's kind of map out the cash flows here, and then make it a little bit easier for you to understand. Well, that's not a straight line. Sorry about that. So, well, that's not very straight either, but let's go with it. So you've got time zero you're putting in negative three hundred thousand dollars right and I'll just I'll put 300 K to make it shorter so at the end at you say it has to be I'm gonna be getting the string here of 75 K 75 K right and this is actually gonna go for for 10 years this is gonna be 10 times that you it's gonna actually go beyond this year five but we need to know within Within this time frame right here, between year, time zero, which is just the beginning, and year five, will we have collected $300,000? Will we have earned an extra $300,000 in sales to at least break even, to get that $300,000 back, right? Now, you might say, well, we're going to do this for 10 years, so just take 10 times 75000 That's seven hundred fifty grand. That's more than 300000 right? So we should, well, that's not how it works, right? We want to know. Forget, we're saying with payback, forget what happens after year five. right? We just want to know before year five, before we get to that point, will we have made back our $300,000 investment? So what we can do is just say, okay, well, let's just take the cost of the investment, which is going to be $300,000. That's the cost of the balloon. Now we take that and we divide it by the incremental sales that we're experiencing each year. So our annual increase in sales is $75,000. So we divide 300,000 by 75,000. And that is going to give us 4. So what does that mean? That means it will take 4 years to recoup this investment. So think about it. We put up 300,000. 
and we're saying that we're going to get an extra 75 grand a year, 75k a year, and after four years, the investment will have paid itself back. So let's let's think about that. Okay, well let's take that 75,000 and multiply it by four. What does that give us? That gives us 300,000. What is 300,000? That's the exact amount that we invested in this. So basically we're saying, look, if we're going to get an extra 75 grand a year, it will take four years. So let me just, so it will be, let's see, here's, here's one, two, three, year four. So at this point in time, we have already paid back our investment. We've earned the money back. Now we say, well, does that meet the specified time frame? Right now, we we had said that if the payback period is less than the required time frame. Well, the required time frame in this case is five years. So five years, but we've paid it back here at end of year four. So what does that mean? That means that we're going to accept this project because the payback period is four years. And that four years is less than our required time frame to pay back our investments, which is five. So this is this four years is less than the five that's required. So we accept. Now, there's some important caveats with this payback rule. Now, it's very simple to use, and that's why a lot of firms will use this payback method. But notice it doesn't give any, any account to the time value of money. If we've gone through net present value and things, and time value of money is a very important concept in finance. So $75,000 right here at this point that's four years from now. That's not worth the same than $75,000 today. Now, if you don't understand why, we've got another video on time value of money you can check out. But just suffice it to say that payback method just completely ignores that. It ignores time value of money. And it also ignores the cash flow after the payback period. So in this case, in our example, we said that we're going to get this extra seventy five grand a year for 10 years. Well, what if that we're evaluating a different project that had everything else the same except that it was 30 years that we're going to be getting that extra 75,000 a year for. Now, if we were to do the payback method for each one, we would both come out or come out with except in each case. Now, you might say, well, except each project. But what if we only had $300,000 to invest? Then we're saying, well, look, now we've got this mutually exclusive investment opportunity. We can only take one of the two. And, and and so, but the payback would say, look, they both pay back within four years, except both. So it really doesn't take into consideration the fact that there's pay, there's cash payments maybe taking place after this this time frame, and we're not even thinking about that. We're just thinking, is this thing paid back, and how quickly? So, and there, and, and probably the, another thing about payback that really is, is a drawback to it is that it's it's just completely arbitrary when we think about this payback period. For example, we say, well, we want investments to be paid back within five years. Well, why five years? Why not six years? Why not five and a half years? Why not four years? And and we're really not thinking about any of these things. So these are very important these are very important topics. And so you might be wondering why do people even use payback at all? It seems like we should really be using net present value. Because net present value is the optimum or the optimal decision rule when we deciding whether or not we want to accept a project you want to be thinking about mpv and sure you can have internal rate of return is important metric too and you can use that in many instances but mpv is where the buck stops in terms of invent and, and deciding whether or not to do investment so this payback period it's got it's got all these problems and so people really like its simplicity and so it's not just that people might be lazy and don't feel like calculating MPV. In some cases, you might have something where it's kind of like a trivial investment or a small, small investment. And it's not something where you're really going to go and calculate out discount, what your discount rate is and, and all these different things. Maybe you're thinking of buying, I don't know, a copy machine or something like that. And you're like, look, we're not going to do MPV. It, it, all the time it would take to do MPV uh, would actually be more time consuming and more costly than just just saying look we're just going to go with the simple payback method and see how how quickly we're going to get our money back from this investment so really the chief uh, advantage to it is simplicity but if it's any kind of decision that you're making on a project that is really important you should be using net present value